Hey everyone, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and this is my first video back in a little while. A couple of you have asked me throughout the years that I took off whether I would actually ever come back on YouTube, and I thought a long time about it, and over time I got a little scared about what this process would look like and how I could ever start up again, and I'm just gonna freaking do it. Uh, so this is gonna be my first uh, re-entry into that. If um, you've forgotten, I like to talk a lot about the process of planning. I like to talk about how things work for me, my experience with things, and um, the evolution of the planning process. I'm a bullet journaler, I also use some other pre-planned planners, and I'm also trying to keep it pretty real in terms of how I use these things for work and home. I'm an educator, so I teach and work on a lot of different projects. So if you're looking for tips and experiences on that context, I'm your girl. Um, if you also forgot, I like to talk about the process. So a reminder that you can always fast forward or speed up the video if you want to make it through more content in less time. Um, I believe in talking about the why because there's too many things out there that you can try for yourself that works for other people but not necessarily for you. So that's why I talk about my process and why it works for me in hopes that perhaps it works for you. The next couple videos, I'm just going to do some flip throughs and talk through what I've been using the last couple years. I have a couple planners that I will walk through. First, I'll probably walk through this Clever Fox bullet journal. I will walk through the way I used this uh, Archer and Olive bullet journal, and then how that has evolved into this system, and then what it is that I'm doing now. Uh, you'll see the evolution of time working on projects to what it's like for me to work at home. So stay tuned for this first video, which is going to be about the Clever Fox and what I was doing in there. So let me know what you want to hear down below, and I'll try to do that in my next couple videos. And I'm happy to be back. So this is the Clever Fox dot journal that I was using in the last year. I got it on Amazon for pretty cheap. It was about $10 and they have some really cool colors and covers. I always recommend this for beginners if they're not ready to like dive into a really, really expensive notebook. Whenever I start off a notebook, I like to get a big picture sense of what's going on in that time. So I start off, of course, with like big picture projects. I was moving at the time, so I needed a lot of uh, space to just dump the things that would come into my mind about that project. So leaving an open space to capture those thoughts is a huge win for me. Keeps it casual, but gives me a place to put it. In this time, I took students abroad to Bali, Indonesia, and they studied there for three and a half weeks. And in that time, I was trying to keep track of all the money that I was spending to make sure that I stayed on track in my budget. This is an example of me using my bullet journal to capture my thoughts. I do a lot of big projects, and if you do the same thing, I love using my notebook to just get a big picture flow of what my work is and then be able to break down specific steps once I have a general vision about what I'm supposed to be accomplishing. Being able to turn the page and putting whatever I wanted there, again, to organize my thoughts. That's why uh, pre-planned planners can be really hard for me because I want to be able to turn the page and gather my thoughts about what I need for the weekend or what uh, quotes really speak to me in that moment. Took some notes on a book I was reading at the time. I tried to skip some pages so that I could keep all the notes together, but obviously never went back to it. Planning, of course, changes whenever you do things that are different from your normally scheduled life. So all those pages you just saw were what I was doing while I was in Bali, and I didn't need my usual planning system. So I got to just make the list that I needed to and nothing more than that. And so when I got home, I needed a place to just put all the tasks for my return into one place. And then I start getting back into my routine. Still using post-it notes because sometimes the work pops into mine and I just need a place to put it. I'm using that combination of weekly and daily so that I still have a way to look at what's coming up that week. 
I can see what's coming. And this is when I started doing the Dutch door. Usually I like to do five days a week. That's my work week. So I just chunk it out like that. And then um, I do daily lists at the bottom, very similar to the bullet journal system where I take up as much or as little room as I need to. This again allows me for the big picture. Here are the big anchor points for the week. This is the, the big three things I need to do that day. And sometimes I add a space for whatever I feel like tracking. So in some cases it's food, some cases it's money. Those are the, the big highlights for the week. And then I get into like the tiny detailed tasks on, on the bottom. And this is really a guess. I kind of just estimated how much space I would need. And then I just cut two middle pages. I just cut it down into the middle and cut as close to the edge as possible. And um, I use up as much or as little as I want to. So sometimes it's a miss. I estimated wrong, but you can use those extra pages for a lot of different things, whether it's memory keeping or journaling or more budget breakdowns or check-ins. You can use that space for something else. The backgrounds on here are just some pigment inks from Ken Oliver, and it's the stamping ink that I've been using where it's just a light and it dries instantly. Brushed that on the back. Again, I love being able to just turn the page and take notes as I need. And another example of a Dutch door, I'm using my stamps. I have lettering into uh, days of the week stamps and individual letters if you want to just put the letters together to create words. Uh, and I'm using a stencil in the back just for a quick pop of color. Honestly, it's the easiest way if you don't draw to just add some color in the background. I can put those links in the video below. But again, Mondays are like my big task days and then it whittles down from there. My office uses a lot of post-its to do shout outs so I t tend to keep some of those in my planner. My attempt at July, again, going through the process of thinking about the next month, what is on my plate, what are the big projects that I need to accomplish. I try to highlight that here by focusing on this is one of the most important projects I work on this is another one and what are the top three to four tasks that I need to do that month to keep that project on track This is just a light watercolor. So you can kind of see that it doesn't show through on the back, which is why I recommend this journal as a great starter journal. The watercolor does warp the pages a little bit. You can see it wrinkle up here, but it doesn't show through the back, which is a really nice uh, touch that you can add if you want. Light color, just a little bit of pigment will go a long way and just let it dry completely before you turn the page. You can see some of my stamps up top here. It's got my calligraphy. more watercolor, more stencils. I would say that this is still pretty minimal. There's just a touch of color. So sometimes on the bottom, I will do days of the week and sometimes I need to think about my week in projects and getting those categorizations in this bucket way helps me sort things out because sometimes I write a general list and it takes my brain a lot of time to arrange the different tasks into its different categories. So this can help with that. More stamps, more projects, more daily breakdowns. Another little shout out. Uh, this is one of my favorite ways to dress up a weekly spread is just sprinkling some watercolor onto it. Um, I've got some liquid watercolors uh, that I'm gonna link down below, but just splash it on there and it adds just enough. I just take a paintbrush and wet it and just um, flick it right onto the page.
And then once I get to the end, there's just a couple pages left, but it probably got to a month and then I wanted to switch it over to something else. So that was about a couple months in the summer last year. And my summers as an educator are very different than what I would do during the school year. So you'll see that in my next video when I go through one of my planners for uh, the school semester. And again, that's why I really like the adaptability of this system. You can kind of make the planner adjust to whatever season that you're in and it will adapt. So how have you been using your planner? I gotta catch up in the comments. Let me know down below what I can cover in my upcoming videos. I'll do some recommendations here and there. Um, either way, I hope that you found something useful and that you can apply these things in your own planning journey. I will see you in my next video. Bye.